Fire Emblem. It's a series that everyone likes to jokingly refer to as anime chess, and for good reason. The games tend to heavily rely upon you making use of every character you can in order to defeat your opponents and protect your most valuable piece, your lord. And thanks to RNG, no two playthroughs can ever be exactly the same. But sometimes you need something new to spice up your millionth playthrough of the game. So what if we throw all of that out the window? <laughs> Since I'm an idiot who's attracted to challenges like a moth to a flame, it made me wonder. Can you beat three houses using Ferdinand only? And while one might assume I chose Ferdinand for meme purposes... I am Ferdinand von Eyre. He actually has one of the most interesting and possibly broken personal skills in the entire game. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we'll need the basic rules. Only Ferdinand can be given weapons and fight back. All other playable units must be stripped of all fighting capabilities. It may seem silly for me to say this, but there will be required units on the field who, if killed, end the game. So they can't have the ability to fight back, thus forcing Ferdinand to protect them. There are also AI units who I can't control sometimes, so it would seem a bit mean if the run was invalidated by their existence. Especially since they suck. Two, I gotta play the game on hard classic. Classic is pretty obvious, since playing the game on casual would make no difference. If Ferdinand dies, then I can't exactly do anything, now can I? Plus, it gives actual incentive to try and protect my required units. As for hard, well, the game will get too easy if I play it on normal, thanks to Ferdinand getting all of the experience. So, art is really to add that extra bit of challenge. With that out of the way, we can begin the game. And I immediately fail the challenge, thanks to the tutorial. It wouldn't be any fun if I ended the challenge here, though. Since we get Ferdinand as a playable unit right after the tutorial, let's see how far he can go. I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing at this point, and I believed that hard mode would kick my ass since I hadn't played through the entire game on this difficulty. So I ended up using all the DLC stat boosting items on Ferdinand, as well as giving him the chalice of beginnings, and then filled his inventory with weapons and one vulnerary. I did end up using Byleth as a convoy for Ferdinand to come back to every now and again in the map, but that and the chalice felt a bit cheaty, so I eventually would drop making use of them unless it felt absolutely necessary. Chapter 1 ended up being a breeze, same for Chapter 2, where I switched over to only giving Ferdinand a sword, lance, axe, and filling the rest of his inventory with vulneraries. Chapter 3 is a bit different thanks to the fog, but at this point I managed to make Ferdinand a cavalier. This change was entirely for movement, so Ferdinand could quickly handle the mage producing the fog and then approach the boss. As while movement is nice, the Cavalier has pretty bad stats. At this point, I should probably talk about Ferdinand's stats. In three houses, horse-based classes all suffer from penalties to speed growth. In order to combat this drawback, it seems the developers chose to give characters intended to be Cavaliers fairly high speed growths, so that the penalty isn't too bad. However, what if I ignore Ferdinand's intended path as a Cavalier? and make use of his 50% growth in speed. Now, his defense growth isn't the best, at only 35%, but I can take his 45% growth in strength and his 50% growth in speed and nurture these combined with some good abilities, classes, and battalions to create an invincible being. One who, while lacking in defense, has such high avoidance that they are untouchable. If you're curious about how avoidance is calculated, feel free to pause the video, as the formula should be on screen. Now allow me to introduce you to Confidence, Ferdinand's personal ability. Confidence provides plus 15 to hit and avoidance so long as Ferdinand's HP is full. So what, I hear you ask? That's only useful when his HP is full and becomes worthless once he's hit, and that may be the case. 
but an additional 15 to hit in avoidance can make a huge difference, especially once we combine it with some interesting skills. Between each mission, we have time to teach Ferdinand different skills, and something that makes him nice is he has no banes. And he has some boons in sword, lance, axe, riding, and a hidden talent for heavy armor. The main skills I'll be training Ferdinand in will be sword, heavy armor, and flying, while also dropping some additional points in lance and axe for future ch class changes. You might be curious as to why I'd choose these skills, especially something like heavy armor that's only used for slow classes, but it all has a reason. Teaching Ferdinand the sword skill is important for a few reasons. For starters, Ferdinand will mainly use swords thanks to them being the lightest weapons, allowing for better speed. Every other level through A+, plus of the sword skill will earn an improved version of sword prowess, a skill that improves hit, avoidance, and critical avoidance while a sword is equipped. And once level S+, plus is reached, Ferdinand will gain sword fare, increasing his attack by 5. Teaching heavy armor is important for one reason in particular. Upon reaching level C in the heavy armor, the ability weight minus 3 is gained. And once heavy armor is at A+, the ability will then be upgraded to weight minus 5. There's also the added benefit of Ferdinand learning the ability seal speed by unlocking his talent, which can be useful at times. Lastly, the flying skill. First off, It'll be an important skill for class changes later in the game, leading us to the final and most powerful version of Ferdinand. Second, it provides one of the most powerful abilities in the game at B proficiency, Alert Stance. Once A plus proficiency is reached, Alert Stance will then be upgraded to Alert Stance Plus. Now, as we move forward with the game, Chapter 4 is a breeze, thanks to Ferdinand's movement as a cavalier allowing him to reach and take out the commander with ease. So fast, in fact, that the reinforcements didn't even have time to show up. Upon reaching Chapter 5, Ferdinand has been upgraded to a mercenary. I no longer need the benefits of movement that the Cavalier gives, and I just want that sweet speed now. At this point, I can start to see the benefits of Ferdinand's speed, with hit chance around 40-50% to 50 when Ferdinand is at full health. It ends up making both versions of this chapter's boss pretty easy for Ferdinand to handle. Chapter 6 was what I feared would destroy the run. While there are two ways to complete the mission, either killing everyone except the Death Knight or killing the Death Knight, there's a pesky turn limit in place. Ferdinand is definitely capable of routing the enemy, but it's pretty unlikely to happen in 25 turns. The only solution I could think of was training him in lances enough before this mission so that he'd be able to kill the Death Knight using the combat art Knight Kneeler. So, I took Ferdinand, now upgraded to be a hero for a slight stat boost, and sent him to what was very likely to be his death. I maxed out his health in front of the Death Knight and prayed that RNG would work in his favor. The numbers were not in his favor, and yet... He did it, not even needing the lance, instead just relying on evasion. I thought that if he could handle this map with such ease, the rest of the game would be a cakewalk. Oh, how naive I was. Chapter 7 was fairly easy. When you have a large scale battle between three teams, you can just let the other two teams kill each other off. There's no downside to this as the morale boost the enemy teams get is pretty negligible. Especially when Ferdinand is so powerful. The biggest issue was that some of the Pegasus Knights from the Blue Lions would aggro on Edelgard and Byleth, but that was still pretty manageable. Before the next chapter mission, I head into Abyss and get the most important item in the game. A rapier. When you combine its strength, lightweight, and effectiveness against both riding and armor, it becomes a very powerful weapon that will carry me through the game. I also make Ferdinand a Swordmaster, making his speed growth now a whopping 70% chance. This is the best possible infantry class you can make Ferdinand, playing on his natural strength and speed. 
When the time comes for the Chapter 8 mission, I blitz across the map straight to Solon. It's better to ignore the villagers, as the reward won't be necessary, and it's impossible to save them using one character. I beat Solon, he runs away, and the most important event in the game begins. The White Heron Cup. While the dancer class is worthless outside of acting as a support class, it does have some use. So I sign Ferdinand up, he wins, and he gains the ability Sword Avoidance plus 20. With this equipped alongside a sword, Ferdinand is one step closer to becoming untouchable, as every bit of avoidance stacks. He's also learned weight minus three at this point, improving his speed even more, making him a force to be reckoned with. Chapter 9 is hell, and the first point when I really run into problems. All because Geralt is an idiot who can't wait five more seconds until dying. If he dies, you fail the mission, despite the fact that he's going to die anyway. <sighs> Anyways, he has no healing items and he will attack the enemy even when he has no health. I originally thought it would be okay to leave him alone while Ferdinand takes care of the rest of the beasts, but you have to babysit Geralt through the entire mission. Once all the beasts are killed, you can finally watch him die. <laughs> You're just a pathetic old man. How dare you get in the way of my brilliant plan, you dog. I then take a detour to complete an ocean view for the sole purpose of gaining the Keyhole Wyvern Co. A good flying battalion with passable avoidance. Ferdinand then learns the Wyvern Rider class, which isn't too good for him, but it'll be useful for improving his flying skill. He then learns Alert Stance, a skill that gives him plus 15 avoidance whenever he uses his turn to wait. Ferdinand is officially broken. With this newfound power, Ferdinand takes care of the Chapter 10 mission no problem, and Byleth becomes god. I return to Abyss afterwards to get another powerful item from the Pagan statue, an evasion ring. Yeah, I'm just stacking avoidance on top of avoidance on Ferdinand at this rate. No one can ever touch him again. I then go have a chat with Edelgard to unlock Crimson Flower. I do this for a few reasons. One, there are fewer chapters in Crimson Flower than Silver Snow, leaving me with fewer opportunities for failure. Two, the final map of Silver Snow would be hell when I have to deal with Violet existing. I mean, just look at that starting position. Ugh. Three, I love Edelgard. Sorry guys, I just can't betray her. I don't know what else to say, man. This does lose me a week to teach Ferdinand, but he's in a really good place, so I don't have to worry. After that, Ferdinand becomes a Wyvern Lord. This is his final class, and for a good reason. The major benefits do include a bonus to speed growths, though not as much as the Swordmaster. However, one of its class skills is Avoidance plus 10. Combine this with the movement benefits of a flying unit, and Ferdinand can wipe out the enemy. I take the new and improved Ferdinand on a test run in the Chapter 11 mission, and he does not disappoint. With his sword skill maxed out, and all of his avoidance abilities, he can dodge anything. All while dishing out decent damage. He absolutely destroys Edelgard, and then I make the decision to protect her, locking me into Crimson Flower. You. How dare you! My teacher, I... Thank you. But are you certain that... No. Now isn't the time for discussion. Words cannot properly express my gratitude, Professor. So, this is the choice you have made. You are just another failure. Once allegiances are made clear, I'm immediately thrown into the Chapter 12 battle. This map is a pretty difficult one, and paves the way for how the rest of the run would pan out. It seems simple enough. Defeat the three commanders to gain access to the monastery, and then defeat Rhea. 
However, if you take more than 10 turns to defeat the three commanders, reinforcements show up from behind you, and they'll kill Byleth and Edelgard. There's no way to defeat the commanders in 10 turns, so I had to control a lot of enemy aggro and character movement so that my squishy commanders wouldn't be caught by the reinforcements. After a few attempts, the chapter was complete, and Rhea crushed Byleth. You will not be forgiven! Professor, look out! The castle is crumbling! We must escape! Professor, take cover! Professor! The time skip ensues, and after being reunited with the Eagles, I get a week to prepare before the Chapter 13 mission. Unlike with the other paths, I don't have to worry about my own units showing up and dying. <laughs> Bye, Lorenz! To think. And instead I can do actual setup for the mission. Which was pretty easy since Ferdinand just had to cross the map and kill Judith. Seriously, it only took two turns. <laughs> Before the next mission, Ferdinand learned Alert Stance Plus. An upgraded version of Alert Stance that would give a whole 30 avoidance whenever Ferdinand used his turn to wait. And Claude would put this to the test with the sheer number of reinforcements that would make up Chapter 14. Still, with enough patience, Ferdinand would reach and kill Claude, completing the chapter. Next up is Chapter 15, in which you defend the monastery. And it's pretty easy, so long as you manage to get the enemies to aggro on Ferdinand, completely forgetting about the monastery. The one thing that makes this map so easy is that one stupid door. In other paths, the door will be open, acting as another point that the enemies can reach to defeat you, but in Crimson Flower, it's closed, making this map so much easier. Not to mention it's a defeat the commander's map instead of rout the enemy, so it's handled with ease. Ferdinand then learns weight minus five, now having all the skills he needs. Now at maximum power, he destroys Chapter 16, blitzing through the map and killing the commanders with ease. All that's left are the final two battles. And oh boy, are the final two battles something. While I viewed them as pretty easy when casually playing, they're something else entirely when doing a solo run. Chapter 17 is a mess of triggers and enemy transformations. I had to carefully navigate around the map to defeat all four commanders. The best way I found to deal with this was sending Ferdinand straight up to immediately spawn Mercedes. I then had to quickly kill every enemy on the top part of the map that would turn into a demonic beast and kill Mercedes as fast as possible to stop flying enforcements. If done right, you won't have to worry about demonic beasts being in your way and Pegasus Knights aggroed on Byleth and Edelgard. And you have to do this without aggroing the mages in the middle of the map, otherwise they'll run towards Edelgard and Byleth, splitting your attention and making things harder. Hopefully you've completed that in 15 turns, otherwise to do will become a demonic beast, which is hell to deal with. Assuming you didn't aggro the mages, you have to carefully approach to do without entering his demonic beast attack range and without aggroing the mages. On your next turn, you then have to attack to do and hope you kill him. If you don't, he'll regenerate all of his health and turn into a demonic beast. After handling the do, you then need to kill Sylvain, who will be surrounded by demonic beasts at this point. And by the way, you have to do all of this without ever passing column 26 of the map, which is between Sylvain and Dimitri's starting positions. Once Sylvain is dead, you then have to pass column 26 and approach the healing tile in the upper woods, triggering Rhea and her reinforcements arrival. Aelgard and Byleth will be in the range of some of the reinforcements, so you have to immediately kill Rhea on your next turn, and then make a run for Dimitri. With Rhea gone, almost all of her reinforcements will retreat, except for the golems, and now every single beast on the map is aggroed towards Byleth and Aelgard. Kill Dimitri as quickly as possible, and only then will the chapter be complete. If that sounded like a lot, well, this is only the beginning, because chapter 18 is its own kind of hell. You see, you're meant to blitz through this map thanks to Rhea buffing all of the golems every few turns. Rush to the boss and kill her. Easy enough. 
and it all goes to hell thanks to Pegasus Knight reinforcements. See, if you kill Ash or Gilbert, three Pegasus Knights will arrive behind them on the map. Okay, that's easy enough to manage. However, if you pass the stairs behind Ash and Gilbert, four Pegasus Knights spawn at the start of the map, right where Byleth and Edelgard should be. You can't blitz this map thanks to those Pegasus Knights, and the fact that Ferdinand can only do chip damage to Rhea since he's on his own. You also have to plan around enemy aggro on this map, as when you aggro the enemy, once you leave their range, they will aggro onto your weakest unit on the field. So if Ferdinand aggroes someone, he either has to stay in their range or kill them. So how do you handle this monumental task? Well, Ferdinand has to immediately go into the center of the map, killing all basic enemies there and the Golem. This will also aggro the Pegasus Knights by Rhea, forcing them over to Ferdinand and allowing him to clear out a decent number of enemies. Once the center area is cleared, Ash can be killed and reinforcements that come after can be cleared out, after which you have to clear out the Golem and enemies on the left side of the map without ever passing the stairs. Once the area is clear, Byleth and Edelgard can be sent to the middle left side of the map. Once they're in a safe spot, Ferdinand can pass the stairs trigger and immediately head back to take care of the reinforcements, after which he can kill Gilbert and Annette, as all enemies will aggro once you enter Rhea's attack range. Now that the map is safe enough, it's time to chip away at Rhea's health by having Ferdinand wait in front of her. While it's faster to also attack on your turn, it's pretty dangerous as the golems can hit you and do a ton of damage. As for Catherine and her troops, they kind of just run towards Rhea, and then they just sit there doing nothing? Uh, whatever the case, after spending a long time chipping away at Rhea's health and killing Catherine so I could steal Thunderbrand because all of my weapons were breaking, I finally won. Rhea died, and I just barely made it through the 99 turn limit. When humanity stands strong, and people reach out for each other, there's no need for gods. Rhea, your reign of tyranny is over. <sighs> the time has come. I'm ending this once and for all! So, can you beat the game using Ferdinand only? Well, sort of. If you count the tutorial battle, then no. But for the entire game after the tutorial, you very much can. This challenge was a lot of fun, and if you ever want to do a solo character challenge, Ferdinand is definitely a good starting character, especially if you know how to use his skills. If you're interested in seeing the complete run, I have a playlist of all the completed maps. The link should be in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. This is a new format I'm trying out, so feedback is kinda nice. And if you want to recommend a different Fire Emblem challenge run, feel free to let me know in the comments. Until next time.